because they used to have parties in here, and of course there'll be hundreds of people, and they get their things jammed like I did otherwise. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I managed to jam it even then. Uh -huh. And they're made in Geelong, Geelong. by Humble and Son. Okay. Ferrier's trademark, Lever Wool Press, number 1928. Out on the board, my lads, the blade shearer stands. The grass and his ears in his thin bony hands. And his bleary eyes are fixed on a blue belly say, And if I only get a girl, I'll make the ring a go. Click, go the shears, boys. Click, click, yeah. click. Top box. Right. Uh, is when when you're filling with wool, it sits down there. Yep. Flips over and it's down there, and uh, you fill it with wool when it's full. You flick it over into the position where it is there now. Using that lever at the top. You're using the, a, a the balanced weight. It's not on at the moment. With the sandbag, yeah. Sandbag on it, and uh, once you've got into position, you release the. Uh, the rope that holds that spear up in the roof, they call that the spear. Okay, that's the spear. Mm -hmm. The spear was lowered down onto the monkey, which is in the top of the box. Which we can't see. You can't see, but it would have been in there. It's yeah. probably lying around somewhere, the original one. Yeah. And uh, once the weight of the spear had come down onto the box, you were able to take the rope off out of the way. Yeah. And you hook this cable on, onto the drum. Brilliant. And then you proceed to wind the cable down and that push the spear down and Squeeze the wool right down into this bottom box. Right. And that was a feature of the ferrier. You could really push it well down so you could keep your bales short, mm. do them up short. Mm -hmm. And once you'd uh, pushed it down, you opened the doors. Don't jam your finger. Yeah. <laughs> Skew the cap into the bottom part, the big bag with the wool in it. So what, can you describe the cap a little bit? The cap is a square piece of uh, jute. The wool packs were jute in those days. Mm -hmm. A square patch of this. You, you speared the, uh, the cap onto the bottom part, which has got mm -hmm. all the wool in it. Mm -hmm. Once you'd skewered it on there, you were able to then take the weight off the drum. Right. Uh, then you hook the rope back on, wound the spear back up into the roof. Right. Then you flick the box over the, out of the way. Well, you could, you could get your bale out with the box there still, but. Uh, before you could start the next boat, you had to have the box tipped over here. And mm -hmm. the first thing you did once you put the box down there, or on the way down, you got the monkey and put it in the top of the box mm -hmm. with the cap on it for the next bale. And when the box came right down, that monkey and the cap are right, in, right at the bottom. Of course, when you tip it over, they're right at the top. Yeah. Do you think the monkey's in there if we look up? No, no, I don't think it would be. Oh, no. Uh, no. There's nothing to keep it there. No. Because it would just fall down without wool in there, Jill. Yeah, 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 that's right. Because yeah. it's completely open the whole way. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, see these holes? If you were, were a bit slow at tipping them over, there were steel bars, three pins that go through there. You'd tramp your wool down because that's on top. And you'd have these three pins in there so when you tipped it over, the wool couldn't fall out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but usually the presses, when they tipped it over, they're in a hurry, the wool didn't have time to fall out. So how much weight would be in a bale? Oh, it would range between, we'll go back to Imperial, it'd be uh, a good average bale, it'd be 300 weight. Um, you could get up to 400 weight. 100 weight, what's that? 100 weight is 112 pounds, and there was uh, 20 hundred weight to a tonne. So 300 weight? 300 weight, 336 pounds. Wow. Yeah. And you get some of the heavier lines like locks and that up to 400 pounds. So how do we move a bale that heavy? I mean, oh, you have a little bag trolley. Oh, bag trolley. Yeah, ah. yeah just hook him, hook him and wheel him around wherever you wanted to. Fantastic. Yeah, that'll just roll them. Yeah? Yeah. And that's the scale in there, so that would have weighed... Yeah, the scales weighed the bales. You, you know, like, and you wrote down the type of wool in the bale, it was branded on the bale, and you had a wool book, mm -hmm. and you uh, printed in the book the weight of the bale, mm -hmm. and what was in it, and, and the number of the bale. Right. And each bale was of a certain quality. Yeah, uh, yeah the, wool. the wool class were classed it. There was all mm -hmm. the different lines of wool. Mm -hmm. Some of them, see this, 3AM, 2AM, 3AM, 3A comb, 2A comb, AM, and super 3AM. That's the top line oh, this there. This is the best one here. Yeah. That's the best one. No, no, this is the skewers. When you're skewering the cap in, they're still pins. Oh. One of them still around, they're probably hidden somewhere. Someone do themselves an injury. See that bag there? That's the counterweight. 
it's just to hang on the rope. Oh, oh right, that's, that's it. That's, you know, quite heavy. Yeah. Mm. What's in there? Uh, it is. There's that's the it. bit that presses down. Oh, and it's getting ruined yeah, too. Yeah. Here's a skewer. You wonder how those scratches have got made. Oh. So that's what you, you three of those, and you feed them through the, the main wool pack, through the cap, back out of the cap into the wool pack, sort of it's like a stitch. Hmm. And there's three of those in each side, and that held the weight of the bale. They're good quality steel, they're usually made out of really high tensile steel. So that's one of the originals. How about that? So that's I don't think anyone's looked in there for a while. That's definitely the monkey there that's sitting in the bottom there and all that gunk. Do you think we should scoop the gunk off? No, I don't think so. Really? <laughs> it's probably priceless. Watch your finger, Darren. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty neat fit under there. Yeah. yeah. So you didn't learn those lessons when you were younger, huh? No, going too hard for it to catch me, I think. And there were sort of little boards that flicked in there to hold the wool pack in. Everything was designed to work quick. Well, they were quick and efficient. You know, they, they made a beautiful press. Did you get a photo in? Yeah. Pretty hard to get a decent photo of it here. But it's all in perfect working order. <coughs> Cables are good still. That's, a... That's the oh, rope that uh, the you have to tip the top box over. It's a sandbag hung on the end of Right. Mm. And it's year number is 1920. So that's not the year it was made? That old, that one up. No, no, that's uh, just the number, serial number. Oh, when would this have been made? Oh, no, no. Yeah, but they're beautifully made. See that beam here, the, you know, it takes all the weight there, all yeah. these pulleys. Sure does. It goes up around, up over a pulley up the top of the spear, down around a pulley, up over the pulley again and down. So, you know, it's got a bit of torque multiplication there. Yeah. And really good order, you know, and uh, that hook there is what the rope or the cable hooks onto there, see? Oh, right. You know, just the chain bit just goes on that hook and away you go. Hold, hold it. Hold it. Oh, it's hard to say, it'd be in the early 19s. 20. I'd love to know where this one came from. Yes, if the wool, if the wool, if the wool shed See, they used to run out of Tura. That's where I used to first use a ferry at Tura property. Load works. See that thing coming up there? That goes up to that safety catch. Yeah. So show me what goes to the safety catch. There's a safety catch up in the top there. You see this little rope? Yeah. Like a fishing line. Fishing line, yeah. Yeah. When you're taking the weight up on this, yep. on the on the when the rope's on it, yeah. Before the ramp can come down, you've got to pull this safety catch to 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 allow it to come back down. Right. It's just a catch there to stop it dropping. Right. If somebody should, if the rope should break or do something. Beautifully made thing. See, that's got a little lug on it, so when this box comes over, it sits on there. Are you giving your run there now? Yeah, done well there, yeah. Finger. Oh, you gave your finger. Yeah, I shut the finger on the door. What a silly thing for a president, though. Yeah. Well, you probably haven't used one for a while. Oh, very rusty. That's a classic. Bring back memories there, to walk into a shed like this with all the wool bins and the doors, and the press opens yeah. the back of the bin yeah. and pulls the wool out, and look over there, the piece has been got a fair drag. Mm. I was a shed in Tasmania where I got 30 yards to drag the wolf one. Oh, you, you, you had your money, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you just pick it up there and put it in like the press of the wolf. Yeah, we had to try it on the table in the press now. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder when they, you know, when they'd... Um, they they'd definitely got burnt down. Yeah. You know, that was a, all this that was when it was part of Burrenburg Station. Yeah, 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 back in the yeah. early days, yeah, so before, probably 20s before or Before my time. Yeah. Well, I reckon it was really. <laughs> some rouse about didn't like the place and he set on fire or something. Might have been a shearer, who knows, but shearing mm -hmm. sheds are vulnerable Someone's to getting someone trouble. getting at them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What year was it originally built then? Out on the board, my lads, the blade shearer stand. The grass, the niches, and this end.